The vicar and I left West End Studios and looked around for the most likely source of an internet connection. If only you had not spilled tea on my laptop, the vicar reminded me before adding, international cargo, I think, and walked into the freight unit next door. Regular vicar watchers will not be surprised to learn that less than five minutes later, he'd successfully commandeered one of their offices complete with an aging PC to access the internet and had also gained something of an audience admiring their exotic visitor from the studio next door. It was one of those moments when you feel this sudden surge of power just following in his wake. Like Hugh Hefner must feel when he snaps his fingers and 50 women instantly drop their bikinis. Nor did he disappoint in his duty to put on a show for his audience. When he first walked into the room, he'd picked up a newspaper, a tabloid newspaper, and tut-tutted at the headline news about a recent rampage by England football fans. They will break panes of glass and smash the windows of coaches and also knock you down without the slightest compunction, he quoted from the top of his head. Would anyone be interested to know what that is? It is a description of an English football match, he paused for effect. In the 18th century, is it not reassuring to know that we are not going to the dogs? We have always been there. He turned and smiled politely to his audience, who would immediately look away and pretend to be actively engaged in some other form of gainful employment. A little bit like a playground game of Grandmother's Footsteps. The tavern is rather worshipped than the church. Gluttony and drunkenness is more abundant than tears and prayers. He paused again. The Archbishop of Canterbury speaking in 1562. You see, Things are not as bad as they seem. They are worse than that. They are also better than that. Unfortunately, thuggery is something we English do well. Unlike sex, as Jeremy Paxman points out in his excellent book, The English. How we reproduce is one of the mysteries of the Western world. This comment produced the desired level of tittering. We typed in the URL that the girl had given us, www whatif.com slash Billy G and we're waiting for the computer to make an archaic dial-up connection. What kind of international cargo business doesn't have broadband? That one day the internet may truly become an information superhighway, but right now there are still places where it's more like, in the vicar's words that day, a traffic jam in the bra of a New York drag queen, painfully slow and crammed full with rubbish that no one wants. A young guy had asked the vicar if the music industry was incestuous. What a strange question. Do you mean musically or sexually? I'm probably the wrong person to ask. Jack Holtzman, the founder of Electra Records, used to claim that pre-AIDS and at the height of antibiotics, if you made a family tree of who fucked who in the business, it would be pretty much solid black. That is why the whole industry could never get up in the morning. More quiet chuckles. I'm not the perfect person for such anecdotes, but I do recall a story about Warren Beatty, the famous womanizer, who was confronted by a woman he had been chasing at an industry party. She turned around to him and said, Warren, I have fucked him, 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 and him. And I am never going to fuck you. Poor Warren was apparently downcast for weeks. General laughter. If you ask me if that is true to my experience of three decades of jumping in and out of vans, travelling the world, playing and recording music in the most unlikely and inappropriate venues, then I would have to say that it is. The site eventually appeared. Click here, Billy G exposed. A window popped up inviting us to download a song, and the vicar clicked on the icon. It would seem that I can finally stop spouting elephantosities and we may actually have some music to play you although the sound on these computers is normally appalling. It downloaded painfully slowly. 10%, 20%, 50%, and finally, wonder of wonders, 100%, by which time the audience of our little concert had grown to perhaps 20 people. We heard the introduction to Billy Dee's new single, Don't Touch What You Can't Afford, the same track that she sung at the lottery. The singing came in as expected, but on the first high note, her singing was painfully out of tune. Everyone in the room winced. The vicar looked at me and raised his eyebrows as if to say, what is this girl of yours up to? As the song went on, the entire audience were, were ducking in advance of all the high notes to try to shield themselves from the worst of the pain. It was unbelievably embarrassing, enough to make even the most ardent fan question her ability. The phrasing was, was the same as the single I'd played hundreds of times at home, but the tuning was 
simply appalling. Quad erat demonstrandum, the vicar said incomprehensibly. Fucking hate Latin. What a fine web we weave when first we practice to deceive, he continued poetically, scrolling down to the bottom of the page where there was some form of discussion forum where fans were posting their comments. Perhaps we should see what the judges made of this fine performance, the vicar said to his amassed audience. Rebel says, listening to this, I am felling, I think he means feeling, sad and depressed. I loved that girl, but she was just pissing. I apologize for the language in the wind like the rest of them. Not exactly up to the standards of Simon Callow on rock stars, but I sympathize with his point of view. He cleared his throat. Water bottle, a more intriguing web handle, says, God, she's the pits. Anyone want to buy my collection from me before I throw it in the trash? He looked at the gathered crowd. If anyone wants to buy some cheap CDs, probably from America, given the reference to trash, water bottles, your man or woman. Royal Trude, these people do choose interesting names, says, she was always a phony. Anyone who could make such a fuss about lip syncing had to be hiding something. A case of methinks the lady doth protest too much for Royal Trude. There might be something in that. Finally, Raging Bull says simply, anyone for a lynch mob. A little severe, although I would agree that singing of that kind should probably carry a mandatory custodial sentence, or possibly an optional frontal lobotomy. Enough, he said, closing the program. We have taken up far too much of these good people's time. Now, if someone would like to give me a large invoice for the time I've spent on your computer, I will be happy to see that Richard Bremore pays it. Someone gave him a piece of paper and a pen. Oh no, you do not want my autograph. I am not that famous, and I only ever sign my own work. He pushed it away. No, really, have punks. Here's the drummer with the Hellboys. I, of course, would have been happy to sign, but the paper and pen had mysteriously disappeared. The vicar was impatient to get back to the studio. It would seem, punk, that Billy G has been pulling the lamb's wool over everyone's eyes and someone is out to expose her. I think it is high time that we went to meet the young lady in question and I asked her some very direct and painful questions. He turned and smiled to me. Although, I still doubt this case will change my deep-seated conviction that anything can be settled over a good cup of Earl Grey tea. That boy's not and now, our third and final flashback. Sing along, I think you should know the tune by now. A lassie number three, my hand is on the knee. Roll her over, lay it down and do it again. When it's over, in the clover, she'll knee you in the groin and leave his doubled over in the pathetic heat, burning in excruciating vein. This is quite a scam, doesn't it? Check this out. The vicar tells me that this Mellotron plays the whole of a Beatles intro. Note the one finger style. So much for music gods.